Okay, we will carry on from where we left off uh, regarding the escalating tensions due to American retaliation against Cuba. So we saw previously in the import the previous lecture the importance of uh, Cuba um, historically and also with their economic um, the economic dominance of the USA and how after Castro takes over you can see things changing. And so from here on, we are going to look at how did USA actually respond to all the things that Castro actually did and how they actually tried to get rid of him. Okay. So the first thing that they tried to do is to impose an economic pressure on Cuba. And uh, USA uses dominance to influence American companies in Cuba to cripple Cuba's economy. And uh, in November 1960, okay. The USA placed an embargo on American exports to Cuba on everything except food and medicine so that they can actually claim to say that, you know, uh, we are punishing you, but at the same time, we are being humane about it by still providing you food and medicine. But this particular economic embargo is ineffective because Soviet Union stepped in and fulfilled Cuba's economic needs. Now, um, you have to differentiate between this economic embargo as well as the naval blockade that we will be talking about later on. So this is an economic embargo. See um, a political cartoon regarding the economic embargo. It would be slightly different from a naval blockade. So make sure that you know how to differentiate between the two, okay? And here's the recent news about um, the lifting of the embargo. Um, only recently, if you can take note of the dates here, 19 December 2014. So that's just last year. A few months ago, in fact. And so uh, they have been discussing how to lift the embargo. Uh, I think it's not yet lifted, but talks are in place. Therefore, if you see this picture here, Obama becomes the first official president to actually, you know, um, have a sniff of, yeah, he's sniffing the cigar here in this picture. Okay, and um, let's see, yeah. all right, if you read the article, it has a unique distinction of gifting the president of United States with one of Cuba's finest cigars, right? And okay, and you can see he's quite happy with the cigar. Okay, you can pause the video to read if you're interested in this. Okay, and uh, yeah, this is a rubbish news website, so they only talk about the president's smoking habits instead of actually the lifting of the embargo. Coming back here, um. We mentioned already that this embargo was not effective because Soviet Union stepped in. Okay. And so United States decided to try to physically remove Castro. And so it started with this thing called the Bay of Pigs invasion, in which they actually attempted to try to remove Castro by invading, but it failed very horribly. And the USA denied any involvement in these operations and claimed that it was the work of the exiled Cuban rebels. And uh, however, it was actually the USA that provided the funding and training for these exiles. So basically, it is actually the Cuban uh, exiles who are actually working under the CIA to try to overthrow Cuba. But uh, sorry, overthrow Castro. But Castro was ready for them, and they actually managed to repel the invasion quite successfully. Okay, operation Mongoose is this uh, operation designed to actually sabotage. Uh, um, Cuba in one way or another and it has continued on apparently until the 1980s so I guess they were quite persistent in trying to get rid of Castro. Eh? The CIA also mentioned only admitted their their involvement in this uh, many many years later. I cannot remember the exact year but I remember I think it was the 1990s I think. But basically many years after that thing has happened. Eh? Okay so this is part of the plans of the Bay of Pigs invasion as you can see here. Alright, and so after the Bay of Pigs invasion, Cuba was convinced that the United States would eventually try to invade them a second time. And so Castro needed somebody to protect them. And this sets the stage for the Cuban Missile Crisis when actually he needs uh, defense. And Soviet Union, the other superpower, was a logical choice for Castro to actually engage with. And so in December 1961, Castro decided to call himself a Marxist-Leninist, basically a communist, and establish a new communist party in Cuba. And now Cuba was a member of the communist bloc of countries fulfilling the fears of the USA. So therefore, you can see um, how the USA's 
and Cuba's relationship eventually progressed from one uh, so-called skewed towards the USA, eventually progressing to this stage where it becomes embroiled into part of the Cold War. So think about the questions here that they can ask you. Um, where, for example, the 12 mark and the 8 mark SEQ. Um, okay, so let's take a look at some of the questions now. Huh? Okay, the easier to deal with 8 mark questions. Explain why Castro's policies affected the relationship between Cuba and USA. You can talk about his land reform law and uh, how he got rid of all the um, USA companies and how he engaged Soviet Union in uh, running the business, uh, running their buying the sugar and so that in exchange for oil and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, explain how American retaliation uh, worsened the relationship between America and Cuba. Explain the significance of Cuba to USA. All these are questions that you can ask as with regards to what I've just covered. Huh? Okay, so that's the 8 mark questions. Okay, and the 12 marks one. Let's see. Okay, for these questions, they would focus mainly on the cause of the Cuban Missile Crisis, which actually you can still discuss about the historical relationship between USA and Cuba. Okay, so when they ask who is to be blamed, okay, like USA was responsible or Soviet Union was responsible. How far do you agree with the statement? Explain your answer. Your essay should be split into two parts, yes and no. So for the yes, uh, with regards to whatever question it is, how the USA was responsible, you can talk about the historical relationship. What did they actually do to cause the crisis to start? Now take note for these essay, uh, especially for Cuban Missile Crisis, the chronology of events is very important. So you cannot say the USA is responsible because of their historical relationship. Then you put down there, okay, the USA did this, Bay of Pigs, and uh, that's why it pissed off Cuba, and so on and so forth. Then you full stop and you end there. No, you still need to continue to link it to how did Cuba actually continue to engage Soviet Union to get them to place the missiles in uh, Cuba and therefore causing the crisis to start. So therefore that will make up your explanation and you need to make sure that this part is very clear. If your explanation is not there, I remind you again for the 12 mark question, you would only be at a passing mark of 6 maximum. Okay, If that is provided that you wrote a fairly good essay without the explanation as well. Okay. And so that concludes the first parts of uh, this chapter. There are another two more parts to go where you go to the actually exciting part where you see the missiles, um, no, not the missiles actually firing off, but you see the crisis actually taking place.